Hey guys, um, in the interest of uh, spreading the knowledge that I've gained from this, uh, I'm going to give you a quick look of this modified linear actuator um, before I start like gluing things down and making them super secure inside the robot. So, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a, uh, a high win linear actuator that I have modified. I've taken the original brushed motor off and replaced it with a brushless motor, uh, which is a... Uh, leopard, I'm looking at this through the uh, camera so it's difficult, uh, Leopard Hobby LBH3650 and it's it runs at uh, 1185 kV which is how many RPM per volt I believe. So the problem with a brushless motor is you can't use the current limit switches which are in the uh, the LINAC because uh, they it's to do with how the current flows and uh, there's no direct current, you've got an alternating current so you can't use the diodes inside here. The, the way the switches work is they only allow it to go the opposite uh, direction when the, when the cylinder inside here gets to one of the ends. Now, I haven't got the cylinder in here at the moment, normally it would be sticking out of here, but I do have inside, you can see, uh, there's the uh, the nut inside which is the attached to the screw which turns and then a little uh, threaded, basically a nut, a plastic nut goes up and down inside it. And it is in there but you can't see it very well. Um, so what I had to do in order to stop this thing destroying itself and add some, uh, well basically I had to add my own limit switches. Um, I, when I say that I mean I took the original limit switches which are inside here and basically uh, I took the bottom off and took the top off. Uh, originally there were two wires sticking through here, uh, which would power this motor, or it, well it wouldn't power this motor, but it would power the brushed motor that was stuck on it. Um, and that was a lot lower power of a motor, so, uh, you know, but I, obviously I couldn't do that because I changed the motor. So, basically, the limit switch is inside here. Um, the nut that's inside there touches a switch that's about up here inside um, when it gets to the top and that makes it so that it can't go any further or it, well it turns the motor off when it go it gets to this point it only allows you to, to put it the other way um, the same with the bottom only that way so what I did was I took the little it's like a plastic rail inside that both of the switches are um, stuck to basically and I desoldered the contacts and soldered four new wires on I, I know it's very messy at the moment but um, well I, it's uh, just been mostly experimentation anyway so this little board here all this is is um, the two uh, pull down resistors and these are basically so that we can um, give information from the switches to the Arduino. Um, if you look up uh, on the Arduino site there's a little tutorial that shows you how to do um, a button input and basically I've, I've just done that twice. So <clears throat> that's pretty simple. Uh, and I, I just made this little board rather than that breadboard there that you can see. Uh, yeah, I just um, just put them on this one little bit of error board, just soldered it all together. Uh, this has, if you don't know what a board is, it's just got like copper lines on the back that you can solder to. It's good for prototyping. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've got these two data inputs on pins two and three. Uh, this this greyish, it looks, I think, is it grey? No, it's kind of whitish, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've got the that whitish grey one and the green one uh, in inputs two and three. And what we're doing here, basically, is using the Arduino to intercept the signal from the receiver um, because normally you would plug your ESC, this is the ESC, uh, you'd plug that straight into the receiver um, in the in the throttle uh, position as you can see I've got it at the moment. However, the only way to implement limit switches easily here is to intercept the signal from here um, into, well, you put it straight into the Arduino and then the Arduino figures out from the limit switches what it should give to the ESC, what it should tell the ESC to do. And so if one of these limit switches, say this top one, is activated, um, it will take the signal from the uh, from the receiver, but if that if the receiver is still telling the linear actuator to go this way, 
um, the Arduino will know, and it will tell the uh, it will just ignore that signal, and it will tell the ESC to basically stop. It's a, a servo command of ninety degrees because that's the middle on a servo. It's you have to use the servo toolbox. Uh, I'll put this code in in the description in a pastebin link or something. Anyway, uh, so what I have here is I have the data line and the ground from the Arduino. Now you need both of these. You don't need the power. In fact, I wouldn't do the power because you don't need it um, unless there's a, an input somewhere, but yeah. Um, so what you need, you need the data obviously to transfer the signal from the Arduino to the, uh, the ESC, and you also need the ground as a reference I believe because it's um, it's digital communication. Um, now, uh, yes, the other thing is the receiver here. I have a power and a, a ground wire here. Uh, I might leave these in. It's not essential, really. Um, it's just uh, um, well, obviously the the data wire is is essential and the ground wire probably is, but the the power wire is just so that I can power up the ASC from the Arduino alone, because the Arduino will give out five volts on that little um, <coughs> that pin there. Uh, yeah, and I've just grounded it out there. And uh, so you can see that the data wire, however, is going into pin five. Let me just get the glare out there. Yeah, pin five in there. I'm decoding that, um, checking the states of the switches when it's. Uh, well, when it when it's taking the signal from here, and well, outputting accordingly. Basically, it just mirrors whatever this, or it um, it doesn't mirror, but it replicates, it copies entirely whatever the receiver says, unless one of these switches is pressed, in which case, it will only let it go in one direction. So that's basically it. I I don't need this in. Um, well, I, I might do. Uh, I need to look into powering out the Arduino. Um, while well, I'm, uh, well, it's not plugged into the computer, but uh, I can probably just do that off the ESC. Uh, and that's about it. I'm going to start gluing everything down, and um, well, I, in this I mean, and probably to these contacts as well, or I might try and solder this to those holes. I don't know. Uh, and putting some strain holes in there so the wires don't snap off during combat. Uh, but that's about it. I suppose all that's left is to give a bit of a demo. So I've got my uh, transmitter over here, and I'm going to switch the ESC on. I'm probably just going to bridge this when the thing is together, but I've got it for convenience for now. So you can see this, and you're actually you'll you'll be able to hear it basically. And uh, I know there's no thing going in and out, but it's just for testing. So if I push the stick up, you can see it stopped there. Uh, once the nut had, I think it's gone all the way to the back because I think it's technically reversed the throttle. Uh, and now if I send it all the way back, obviously you can control it by a bit. So obviously the further I push the throttle, the faster it goes until it gets to the point where it's at the end and you can see it. You just see the edge of it in there. So that's it at the top. And if I show it you at the bottom, oh, you can't quite see it anyway, but uh, <laughs> trust me, it's in there. You can tell that it's stopping at either end. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to show. Uh, like I said, I'll put the code in the description. Um, so yeah, see you later.